Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join me. Um, I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. So please introduce yourself and then I'll ask you a bunch of questions and we'll go from there. Yeah. So hi, everyone. I am Francesco Rosa from Dark Omen Yarn. Uh, I'm Italian. I live in Italy and I have my own little dye studio uh, in Spotorno, my hometown, uh, for about, it's not, it hasn't been a year yet. It's about maybe a, 10 months, 10, 11 months. Right. And um, yeah, I have a bit of a history in dying. Um, well, let's, let's talk about it. So before you like, before you started dying, were you yeah. a knitter to start this? Yes, uh, I became a knitter when I was going to university in okay. Venice. I was studying Japanese, uh, Oriental languages, as right. they call it. And um, I was a huge video game nerd and loved playing video games. And at a certain moment, I was like, oh, maybe I could do something more uh, manual and more color. Well, colorful. Video games are very colorful. That's why right. I, where I get my inspirations. But, you know, just more manual and more productive uh, with my time. And jokingly, I decided to try knitting. Well, I started with crochet because knitting was very, you know, I was very intimidated by it. And, and I started with crochet with some cotton and a, what was it? A plat not, not even plastic, one of those metal crochet that, Oops, are, yeah. yeah. And I kind of liked it. And, and then I graduated to knitting after I think, I don't know, four or five months of crocheting. And I dropped it ever since. I'm not a huge fan of crochet. Do you remember your very first knitting project? Oh yeah, uh, it was the um, fringed shawl by Stephen West. Oh, nice. Yeah, because I think I started out trying, um, you know, traditional needles, the, the right. long ones, but I never managed to get, a, the, I don't know, the hang of it. And so I just said, okay, this is not for me, but I'm not gonna put any more effort into this. And then while browsing the internet, the internet i went on on the youtube and i found <laughs> <laughs> stephen west video uh and he was using circular needles right. and i was like "Ooh, this is so i don't know sounds easier so i went purchased one and that was my first project it was fun. funny because i need probably 90 percent of everything i do with if not 99 percent with circular yeah. needles and there's like two camps of thought and some people are like, yeah. no, 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 it has to be straight. And then there's people like me who like need everything <laughs> on circular. Oh, yeah. It, um, it can be a sweater, you know, a piece sweater, what do you call it? The, right. the one that you have to, to sew and I just use circular needles. Why right. bother? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk a little bit about uh, your journey in the Asia. Like, so you went to... Uh, yeah um, say that again you went to japan as a student yeah no uh i went to japan as a way of binding myself i'd say okay <laughs> uh at first i went to nepal um where i was studying um tibetan modern tibetan in a monastery and then after graduating yeah i moved to japan for three months and i was uh just Ca very casually uh, working as a, um, um, I don't know, I was working at a guest house. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I was uh, making the beds and uh, um, in introducing the guests to the, to the facility. And since I was the only one uh, speaking a little bit of Japanese beside the owner, uh, it, was a, it, it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of uh, expats and yeah. So then from there, you moved to France? Or you yeah, not straight away, um, but I went back to Italy and then spent the summer here because I, I think I, I came back in May. And 
yeah, I spent the summer here. I worked as a bar, not a bartender. Uh, everybody's a bartender nowadays. I know. <laughs> <In meeting. laughs> I already interviewed two. <laughs> I, I was uh, almost believing I was a bartender too. Uh, no, I was just serving tables and uh, making coffees at a, at a, um, at a hotel here in Spotorno. Right. And and then my mom remembered that I went to Paris to uh, have a um, knitting class with Stephen West uh, back in 2014 or 2015. I don't really remember the date. Um, at uh, Loisivete, the one, the, the tea shop owned by Amy. Right. And and so she was like, oh, why don't you ask her if she can, you know, give you a job? And I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> but I did. And she was like, oh, sure, you, you know, come. And that was in, I think it was in July. Yeah, June, July. And uh, in September, I was already flying to Paris with my little baggages. So when you were there, so you started in the coffee shop there. Yeah. Um, did you do much knitting at that time? Like, what was your job and how um, was it knitting related? Because I know that coffee shop, they also do some knit alongs, right? I mean, knitting yeah. there, right? They do knit nights. They used to do them every Wednesday. Now I think uh, it's closed for COVID or something like that. But they used to have knit nights on Wednesdays and I used to serve tables um either in the morning or in the evening well the, the only evening uh, that was on, on the Wednesday and I used to do the baking part of it um and I used to knit but you know as a side thing uh, on, on my own uh, I I also used to you know uh, yeah design shawls and stuff because uh, uh, it was the big designing craze uh, we're like oh the Stephen West I want to be the next Stephen West right. and I designed a couple couple things and they're on rivalry but so just self-promoting um, <laughs> <Go for it. laughs> but yeah I was knitting and it's it's uh, I think it's where I discovered um, a luxury yarn because I used to knit with some you know uh, good wool but on the cheaper side right. and uh, in Paris it's where I discovered the uh, you know Madeleine Tosh um, yeah Madeleine Tosh was you know the big thing back in 2015 I think 2016. So how and, do you go from uh, basically like serving the tables mm, to dyeing yarn? Um, it was a long process uh, if a year can be considered a long time right. um, because I think I, I was serving tables at Loisivete for about three to four months and then I moved to La Bien-Aimé uh, which was back when it was in a it was in a very small shop with you know a basement where I used to pack the the yarn uh, for the clients down there and uh, there was just me Amy and Hero uh, the dyer, the head dyer, and um, but I wasn't dying at first. Uh, I I was just yeah packing, and I think I started preparing the yarn to be dyed. You know, measuring dye powder and stuff like that, and and I kept baking. <laughs> I kept baking. Um, I don't know if I was ever that good at. Oh, but whatever um then i think they saw something and they were like okay um let's um get you into the dying uh, process that was when we moved a uh, studio from the small shop to the medium one because now they're into a much bigger one right and um, and yeah since i think also because they you know they gathered more wholesalers and uh, um more and more customers because they grew very quickly right. and so they needed more arms in the in the dyeing studio so when was, you were uh, yeah. first dying there how was how were you instructed like was there exact formula and you had to fo yeah. follow like exact step by step like it was yeah. it wasn't like you didn't you didn't have like artistic freedom at that point you just no I, I didn't have that 
now um to me it was anyways it was completely new right. uh, because first of all i wasn't expecting ever to go you know and die yarn that wasn't the you know the the master plan behind all my moves because uh, i didn't even know that le bnma was a thing uh back there i was like oh i'll just you know get a job in paris and then i don't know move somewhere else and yeah so i i was dying uh the colorways that they taught me how you know, I was dying certain colorways at first, and then I moved to all of them. And, uh, but yeah, I didn't have any artistic freedom. There was a, I don't know, one, one instance, instance where, where we all uh, died one colorway. Um, well, the dyers had more possibilities. We had a little, I don't know, four or five colorways to do. And then the whole team was dying uh, one colorway each. So that was fun. But uh, yeah, that was a part that was lacking for, uh, for me, at least. Right. So yeah. was that why you decided to try to go on your own? Yeah, I guess that's among many other reasons. But uh, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I think that, you know, when, uh, when you're a dyer for a company, I, I don't think, and, and you're just a dyer, you're, a, you know, it's a, your a pair of arms well you're much more of course but you know allow me to to say a pair of arms but that would meaning no disrespect to the to the thing uh but uh where, where, where was i going with this um that's how you started uh how yeah, you decided to um, go on the i lost the, my train of thought uh but anyways um yeah it was uh, one of them big the, the main reasons because uh yeah you know we, i didn't have any any agency in what i was doing uh i was just following you know the orders and then oh yeah that's where i was going uh there's no perspective you know there's no big plan there's no master plan there's no future on it you're, you're just gonna do that so i think it's also a, a not a seasonal job but uh you stay there for a while, you stay there for a couple of years and then uh, you almost expire and then you have to go and do something else. If you're not, you know, part of the management or part of, you, you don't own anything in the business. Right. So if you have the, um, you know, if you want to move on to something, you know, bigger or, or of your own, that, you know, you can manage every single aspect of it. Right. then you have to move on and you know did you feel like you've learned a ton there though oh yeah i learned how to work in the first place right. not just dying but i learned how to work uh, because you know i was watching um what's her name oh boy inspired fiber works yeah um Veronica. yeah Veronica um interview and i was uh in, in awe that you know she she just picked it up she just picked up dying from you know youtube videos and right. you know asking and oh her friend saw that you know her yarn was great and blah 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 uh, i'm more of a technician if you will well i wonder if like you love baking Oh, <laughs> similar to that because baking to me is like exact science. It's not yeah. like I I love cooking mm -hmm. and I'm pretty good at it, but it's like baking is just like it's too restrictive yeah. to me because you have to like follow each teaspoon, otherwise, oh, you know, yeah, 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 loose. that's so true. So I wonder, like, if you attracted to that because of your love of baking. Yeah, that's you know, it could be, it could be, but I I. Yeah, I'm. I see myself not as an innovator, but more of a technician. I can do this job pretty well, right? Because I've learned so much at uh, La Bienname. So I, you know, I can. I know how much time it takes. I know how much yarn I can, you know, uh, put out every day, and I'm still, of course nowhere near those levels because well, I just, just started, started but, uh, also, just yeah 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 of course <laughs> but you know I have that in my head and I'm like oof I could do much more 
Right. But you know, it's uh, it's gonna take time. And well, you um, also started during most difficult time to start. Yeah, that was a great idea, right? <laughs> I mean, it probably was because it gave you like some leisure to just yeah. like experiment and try. You know. Yeah, you know that's a thing that I I'm not that good at. You know, experiment and try and and you know play be playful with the with the job and so when i started when i first started i was like no i want to have five colorways they're gonna be this this and that and this is gonna be it and uh, and then i'll move on when people are, have bought all of the, <laughs> the right no this is not how you do it this is not uh but you know you learn these things as you go because you know there was a lot of um um naivete if you will, when I first started, I was like, oh, you know, I can die and the rest, I'll figure it out. Right. Yeah, it takes a lot of time to figure everything else out because <laughs> there's so a- what, Like when you market something, like tell me about your first transactions when you just start. So you came home, you decided yeah. to try it on your own. What was like your first steps, your first sales? How did you market yourself? How did you try to gain the clientele? I so I was like, I am not gonna use uh, the fact that I worked at La Vienne I'm just gonna be me. I'll start a new Instagram account. I had no idea how, how how hard it could be to you know start a new Instagram account in 2020, not because of COVID, but just because it's now it's social media now it's completely different than it was, you know, a couple of years ago. But I was like, oh, I'll do. I'm not going to be like LBA, but I'll still use the same tools. So I was like, I'll have a Shopify and try and make a website on my own and market things on Instagram using fancy hashtags. I had zero traffic, <laughs> absolutely zero traffic. But um, and was it the like first... very disheartening? Like, were you thinking? Um, it was eye-opening, but at the same time, I wasn't, um, it's not like I wasn't expecting it. I was like, well, play it cool. And then, uh, you know, I knew I couldn't play that cool. But, you know, my friends bought some yarn. They were like, oh, you know, it's great. You're doing a good job. You should move, you know, you should keep doing more color. Bring us more colors. And, and then I was like, okay, okay, I, I think I can, you know, figure this out. And then I, I didn't also want to um, do the same thing I was doing at La Bienname, because when you learn how to die one way, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. Right. You're just going to, you're not going to use the same formulas, that's for sure. But the mindset is that the right. way you work is that way you, how to, the, the way you end up working for not the rest of your life because you know then you try at least to innovate a little bit but um you know that's that that's it how do you choose the basis to work with like do you have your favorite go-to yeah base and i i tr i'm trying now to move a little bit you know a little outside of my comfort zone which is super wash merino and it's the bases that La Bienname used, the you know the one that are open to the public, and right. uh, um, which is basically the ones that everybody else uses, because uh, you know. But I, I you know, I, I like um, plied yarn now. When I, at first I used to like only single ply, because you know, merino singles and uh, skinny singles, right. um, but yeah it's merino superwash lately i've started to enjoy non-superwash yarn but i think i'm still not there yet i need to uh you know be a little more um as as we were saying before playful with uh with that well uh, talking about playful yeah so let's talk about the name of your company oh <laughs> <laughs> because i was like S. why is yeah why is dark <laughs> almond yarn and then i start like i googled it and then of course the the warhammer came out and i was like okay the warhammer oh. 
the is, is it like game based like how did you come up with it um i think i wanted to go a little bit in a different direction that the unicorn world of yarn you know back at Lavina May people were saying oh you're the fairies of uh, you know uh, yarn and you put sprinkles on yarn and poof and I was like well maybe I want to cater to a different audience uh, to a, a little more grungy and dark kind of audience which is eh, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> you know name wise I had no idea how to call the brand, no idea. Right. I, I knew I wanted to go this direction. And when it came, when the time came to uh, give a name to the brand, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I wasn't prepared at all. And I was in front of my, um, what's the word, accountant, yeah? Yeah. And she was like, okay, now we need to, okay, dish out the name. <laughs> and I was like, oh, um, Dark Home and Yarn, yeah? <laughs> I thought about it a lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, okay, please write it on a paper, uh, on a piece of paper, because I don't know what it means. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I love the name. You know, it's not a name that uh, I'm like, oh, I chose the name. I don't know. I, don't know. I could have chosen anything closely related to my name, which, you know, my surname is Rosa, Rose, Pink. I could have played with that. I didn't. I was like, no, I want to be dark and I want to, yeah, and it'll <laughs> work. Hey, it's working a little bit, I guess. So, okay, so let's talk about. So, you just recently today, I think, updated your oh, yeah. merino sock. Yeah, I put the merino sock. Right. Um, and there is like all these colors based on the League of Legends. On the League of Legends, yeah. So, what's the significance? of that for you so um so league of legend dates back in like 10 years ago i started playing with one of my ex-boyfriends and i've never stopped so uh, i mean i haven't been playing a lot the past maybe two years a couple matches here and there but uh, um that's where my you know where colors are most prominent you know where, where you see all different um combinations of colors the, the the artists of league of legends are amazing right lately the at the beginning it was uh, a little <laughs> i don't know but <laughs> lately they're really good and i know that well not everybody else but the the thing you see mostly on social media when talking about colors it's nature or mood boards that combine different landscapes and uh, i don't know animals you know right. nature and so i was like okay this been done uh, let me move into a video game area i know that there's someone who's doing pokemon themed uh, colorways and i they're like ah oh, i can't do that uh so i don't think there's a league of legend one and um so I was like, okay, at least it's a good way if I end up copying, copying a, another color from someone else to say, oh, okay, it was, you know, was aiming at this League of Legends character. It's not at your right. color. Because, <laughs> right. you know, it's an issue in this world. Right. I was talking actually with uh, Joshua from the mm -hmm. um, Blue yeah. Fiber Company, and he was saying the same thing, how like somebody was sort of implying that he used the same oh, yeah. colorways, uh, and he was like very frustrated with that because he's yeah. like, I came up, you know, but it's like, there, there is like endless combinations, but some of them do look very similar, you know? And also there are certain combinations that are just everlasting and, right. you know, evergreen. Right. People are just going to do them over and over and over and uh, in different ways because we have different hands. It's like uh, baking, as we were saying before. If I follow the recipe with my hands, you're going to follow the recipe with your hands. Right. Same recipe, different results. Right. And then, so when you um, start dyeing colors, right, do you, mm -hmm. like you personally, do you gravitate more toward the tonals or you love the whole freedom of the speckled yarn? Eh, I think I'm more into tonals. That's how I started. And also I was a little strict at first. I was like, 
I'm not gonna do speckled colorways because this is too labien MA or this is too hedgehog fibers. I don't wanna copy them. I wanna be, you know, and then there's like a ton of other companies that do just tonals. So, right. you know, <laughs> again, it's a non-argument, but uh, I was uh, going very tonal, very um, saturated. I like very saturated colorways and Actually, and I like was admiring neutrals. your golds today. There was like oh. bright yellow and like this deep gold color. And I was like mm. drawing over them. I, was like, <laughs> okay, I have to revisit the store at some <laughs> point. Um, how do you, like I've noticed that you've, you've put some kits for Suzanne Summers' show and yeah. then for, the, for Westmead. Do you uh, collaborate with designers like ever or do you no. just like you see their neat along and you're like okay I would suggest to use these yeah. colors That's how it's I'm the big names it's uh, it's what comes up so uh, I saw that the curvette shawl was an easy one it was easy to do color combos and so I was like, okay, that's a no-brainer. I have to do this. I was talking to Ted Nitz UK. Uh, he's on the group. Uh, and uh, I think he was, well, this was back when it came out. And uh, he was saying, oh, are you, are you doing this? And I'm like, what? I didn't even know that this came out. Uh, I guess I will. I, yeah. Right. And then he was like, oh, you know, you should do the, the mystery call of Susan Summers. And I'm like, oh, I tested it for her a billion years ago. So yeah, I have to do it. So, oh, come up with yarn. Just pick this, pick that. Uh, and then apparently I made something that people liked. So right. I was very happy with that. And so I tried to, you know, uh, propose something else uh, now with the new colorways. Always with, you know, I say always with these shawls in mind, but four colors are almost the new standard. Right. Before it was three, now it's four and going toward five. Right. So, you know, you play around with that and you also play, um, I, I tend to play kind of safe with colors because I know that speckled colors, uh, speckled colorways are more, um, you know, um, eye appealing and people tend to gravitate towards that. But then what they tend to wear, it's completely different. So right. I always go into the more tonal ones instead of the speckled. It's but funny that you a... like mentioned it because I'm working now on this surprise show. I'm going to interview one designer and mm -hmm. I wanted to make one of her um, shows just as mm -hmm. a like surprise, something to wear, right? During yeah. the interview. And so I chose this like craziest of the crazy. And I'm usually not very crazy in my color choices. Mm -hmm. Like I like speckled, but I like sort of like very close to tonal speckled, like a little yeah. variations, right? And that this one, it's like unicorn, like throw up all over the place. <laughs> like there's every color of the rainbow yeah. and that yarn. And I'm knitting it and I'm like, I'm almost done. I'm two rows away from the final Mm. um they you know casting it off yeah and i'm still not sold on it it's sort of like <laughs> i'm still like watching it and it's like i don't know if i love you or not but like yeah, you're that... interesting you know but it's so true that like you you look at the yarn and it's like oh my god it's so pretty yeah. and then and you, you need with it, it and, and you're like well i don't know <laughs> <laughs> this is my problem uh ever since i started knitting uh I love the yarn. I love the, the colorways separately, even together when it's the skeins that you put one after the other. But then when you knit with them and you, you know, the patterns develops, you're like, ah, that's not how I, you know, envisioned it, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. Because at the end of the day, I think it's also, um, you know, we knit with it. So we see it every single day uh, if we knit daily. Uh, and so, I mean, I tend to get bored very quickly of the color I, uh, I am knitting with. I am knitting the, the mystery call from Sosu Knits. And I'm like, oh, can I start with a new, can I start with new colors? <laughs> right. But no, I, you know, I, you know, I need to finish this and it's going to be in the windows of the shop because my shop is, all, my lab is also the shop. Right. So you have a physical location, right? Yes. Okay. That was yeah. a, another very good move. <laughs> <laughs>
well, now that the COVID is over, I'm hoping that yeah. the, it's going to start picking up. And Yeah, I mean, uh, I hide behind a finger. I hide behind the fact that I'm like, I don't need physical uh, customers. I'm doing everything online. And while that's true, um, it's also very true that a lot of income comes from uh, physical people, that right. real people in real life that come to the shop and see the actual yarn. That's why I'm so thankful to all my wholesalers, my three wholesalers right. uh, so far, that give the possibility to people you know, overseas, uh, uh, overseas to actually touch the yarn. This is a very physical um, product. And it's not, you know, right. a, a pattern that you see and then you're gonna make. It's yarn, you need to feel it, you need to touch it. And then in your store, like, is there any events like meet nights or anything like that, the social? It's part? been very strict for, uh, you know, right. uh, the COVID thing. So I haven't even thought about doing it. Also, it's getting a little crowded because I have a huge glass um, table with all the yarn on top. And then just next to it, there's the uh, counter with the, with the pots. And I have recently decided, another good move, to up the voltage of the, uh, of the shop and slash lab to accommodate for more uh, pots and burners. So, I mean, in anticipation to the fall where I hopefully am gonna have more uh, wholesalers. And um, that's another weird thing, me uh, going for wholesalers instead of, you know, fishing for physical clients. <laughs> well, but, I mean, it's uh, all part know. of the marketing, you know? It's yeah. like you have to market yeah. yourself in every direction. You have to yeah. be also I'm like, and... I can do 200 skeins a day. Please call me. I'll do it for you in a week, uh, you know? Uh, well, so, talking of that, so you're coming yeah. from the very established um, dyeing lab yeah. into your own business. Were you like super picky and it's like, I just need the best equipment. This is not going to do. Like, how did you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I was like, oh, I just, I'm going to do like the big studio, but I'm going to scale it down. And in the process, I think I messed something up, <laughs> but uh, I tend to have the, you know, I tend to look for high quality pots. The burners are the IKEA ones. They're okay. They're okay. Right. Um, and then I have, you know, the citric acid, the dye powders are everybody else's dye powders, Dharma and Prochem. <laughs> and, uh, and then I do me. Uh, the thing that I like doing when I, I mean, the, the way uh, that La Bienname came up with their colorways was uh wasn't was good i liked it a lot i had something to say on you know a couple areas but uh the general um work work style working style was was nice and uh so i tried to not reproduce it but um go on the same direction uh with not using um, colors that are already combinated. Right. So I just go with the primaries and mix them. And then everything else comes out. Apart from browns, browns are fun to, you know, are better if you use them uh, already. Do you, have, do you have favorite colors? Uh, I have colors I tend to go back to, that's for sure. I'm like, oh, this color needs a glaze. I'm sure gonna go with these two colors. Oh, hello. <laughs> but browns, yeah. I'm, again, I was like, I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel, but I'm still gonna be a little playful. And then as I was being playful with things, I was like, this is the same. This is gonna, this is coming out the same as, you know, um, the other color that I forced myself not to use. Right. because uh, you know i was using it before so it's just a mindset uh it's you'll get out of it sooner or later and uh, right you know. um 
tell me a little bit about taking pictures of the yarn and like achieving mm. the right color in the picture. <laughs> That's hard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I ask. <laughs> uh, so when I went to Nepal, I had this, um, uh, what do you call it? A ref reflex, mm -hmm. reflex camera that I bought because I was like, oh, I'm going to be a blogger. I'm going to blog about my journey. I, I, I did not. I didn't even start one. And I even took maybe 50 pictures in three months. So, but I had that reflex and I was like, okay, I'm going to use it. You know, I'm going to put it to good use. And I am using it every day, but I'm not that sure I'm using it the right way. I have no idea. I am, you know, uh, before I was using it in the uh, automatic kind of way. Right. Now I'm in the manual and the analog, whatever. So I tend to be a little more fancier now, but it's far from being Still perfect. Work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very big work in progress. Um, and then I use my phone, which is a cheap phone. It's not an iPhone. Right. Um, I wish I did because uh, I could condense everything into that phone. But this one is more for Instagram because I'm, you know, you take the picture from the camera, you put them in the computer and then to the phone. Right. And then when it's finally on the phone, you tweak the hell out of the yarn because it never is the uh, exact colorway. I, if I had a um, shop with windows, this is a curse of mine, not having windows anywhere I go. <laughs> right. When I was living in Paris, I didn't have a window. I had only one window in the door and that was it. But that's it. But that's beyond you know, important. Uh, so I tweak them on the phone and then I post them. But photos, they're just not my thing. I do it and I try to, you know, be, um, oh, this, this dyer is doing pictures this way. Eh, let's do it similarly. And then I forget how they do it and I keep doing it the same way I do. And right. I think they're okay. They're, they're, I mean, I like to have quantity, not over quality, but to, um, uh, to mask my lack of skill with the camera. <laughs> and like, okay, they're focused, but it's not a eye-pleasing picture you know i don't know no... i disagree i love you oh. oh okay good good <laughs> you know <laughs> we're the worst critics so. to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's good i, I Thank actually you. love your website <laughs> yeah um well so you have updates for just now right so i'm gonna put the link on the yeah. video to your instagram you. page and um hopefully people gonna get to see your yeah. beautiful yarns and you, you also have the free shipping now to us like yeah over it's, amount, right? um, again the free shipping is more of an investment on my part instead of uh, something that actually works uh, in my favor but yeah it works in my favor it's just that um i can barely afford it but i was like it's um you know there's a the threshold is 200 euros for me to be actually rentable so right. maybe you can combine uh, um, orders with like your friends and stuff like that yeah that's a great idea actually yeah and i was like well you know people actually expect it you know they expect to get something mm -hmm. and you know i get your money you get my yarn but i also want to you know give something else it's not just a, a trade of a product and money and i don't like it so i try to i also put you know little samples of different bases that the people didn't actually buy and uh, right. but yeah i do have the free shipping now uh for the us the, uh, canada and everywhere else in europe but if you're watching and you, your country is not there just please send me a text before buying <laughs> and we'll fix it right because uh being a one-man show is fun uh but i don't want to say it's difficult but it gets confusing to have everything in focus so if today i'm focusing on yarn i completely forget about the website or instagram 
I don't right. even have uh, Instagram notification turned on. So I'm always going back on Instagram to see, oh, some <laughs> did somebody else, I don't know, commented on the picture. Right. So I get a little, um, you know. Well, I'm sure like as you grow, like it's gonna, you're gonna figure it out because it's like yeah. it's one of those yeah. things where you like, you're learning as you grow. You know? Exactly. And um, that's also a plan on the long term to grow and to have, you know, people to work with and to collaborate on a daily basis. Because uh, the thing I liked the most working at La Bienname was the team. We were a really good team. Uh, right. um, then, you know, we scattered all over the place. But uh, when we were working together, we were doing a very good job, I think. And um, I would like to reproduce that in, uh, right. in you know, here in Italy. Because in Italy, I don't think there's a um, hand in the dyer that has this. Well, there's a Delani Vendole from Genova. They're doing a really good job. And uh, they're also very international now. So, right. yeah. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank I'll you. try to do my part in like <laughs> sending so as much. many people to you as I can. Um, this is already a lot for me. So <laughs> thank you so much. It was so nice to get to know you better. Right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>